Hello, my name is Robert Halligan. I am Managing Director and Founder of Project Performance International, PPI. PPI consults and tr trains in the principles and methods of systems engineering worldwide. Having delivered training so far in 41 countries across six continents uh, and to over 17,000 alumni. PPI is a member of the Corporate Advisory Board of the International Council on Systems Engineering and also has an MOU within COSI to work collaboratively towards the furtherment of systems engineering practice. I hope you find this presentation on six myths of systems engineering interesting. Here we go. Myth number one, systems engineering is a process. Well, no, not really. What systems engineering is, is a set of principles based on system thinking and a set of process building blocks with which we implement, with which we construct our own process. Now that process is, is dependent on variables such as the complexity of the problem and solution, the degree of novelty, the degree of risk due to technology, and the importance or value of the system, amongst other, other parameters. We see in the background a set of process building blocks. You see centre left, analysis of requirements and other aspects uh, of problem definition, one of our process elements. You see physical design, centre top, deciding and recording how we're going to build the solution. Logical design, centre bottom. Formalisation of the logic of how the system is supposed to work, as opposed to be built. And those two aspects of design are intimately related. Logical design supporting our efforts to get physical design right, and done therefore interactively, uh, iteratively with physical design. Effectiveness evaluation decision, the conduct of trade-off studies, implementing a very simple principle. Identify feasible solution alternatives in physical and logical design and pick the best. Description or specification of system elements. The transformation of requirements created by design into the same set of requirements organised as a set in a suitable language for the purpose of communicating those requirements to drive acquisition or other realisation of each of the system elements. Engineering special integration. The mainly management actions to ensure that disciplines, uh, disciplinary skills associated with disciplines such as safety, reliability, ease of use uh, and, and many other possibilities are effectively applied and integrated uh, into the mainstream of the engineering, into requirements, into design, into subsystems, into system. System integration. Building system in development from system elements. Joining elements together, creating aggregates, carrying out integration testing, adding additional elements to aggregates, creating bigger aggregates, more integration testing and eventually reaching a point where the system seems to have come together correctly and is now a candidate for formal system verification. Which brings us to verification. Have we done the job right? Have we made any errors in creating the product? Carried out on uh, potentially any work product of engineering? Requirements, design, subsystems, system, plans, test procedures, you name it. Validation. Different concern. Have we created the right product? Have we done the right job? And carried out on, again, requirements, design, subsystems, system, plans, test procedures, you name it. And then systems entry management. Managing the engineering where a systems approach is being used to that engineering with all the general concerns of managing anything, 
together with specific concerns of managing engineering, including configuration management, interface management, managing design complexity, requirements management, to name a few of those concerns. And uh, that is the nature of systems engineering. It is not a one-size-fits-all activity. Myth number two, systems engineering for, is for systems engineers, whatever that term means. Well, yes, but not entirely. If you look at, at it, you find that the principles and methods of systems engineering have direct application across the entirety of engineering practice. Now, to provide a little bit of evidence of veracity of that claim, you uh, see here a list of five principles uh, of a much larger list of system engineering principles, and they're mapping to a set of uh, different types of systems. The uh, applicability to a large-scale socio-technical system, such as the country of Singapore. Secondly, to a complex technology item such as an aircraft or an air traffic control system. Thirdly, to a simple technology item such as a, a pen. Applicability to software of any size and any complexity. Applicability to the injury of a non-system. This 50 centavo Brazilian coin, for example, is an injury dead product but you could not describe it as a system. It is not, be, it is not constructed of two or more interacting elements. And yet it has been engineered. Now, when you do this mapping, you find, with only one exception that is not shown here, uh, one out of 15 principles having only limited application uh, to non-systems. Let's move on. Myth number three, process standards are icons of virtue. Well, some can be very good, some are very good, and some are not so good. The standard of process standards is highly variable. Take, for example, ISO IEC IEEE 15288 2015, which is the current ISO systems engineering standard, systems engineering system lifecycle processes which I would describe as disappointing. It's, the standard is better than nothing, but not a great deal better. To take that point further, you see here a table of a, a very short extract of a 25-page um, application guide to that standard, looking at the issues uh, and providing workarounds where appropriate to those issues. Now, some of the issues are absolutely profound. Others are uh, more in the noise. Myth number four. MBSC is SysML, System Modeling Language. Well, no. There are many aspects of MBSC beyond SysML. There are other languages, public domain languages such as um, OPM, uh, language developed by Dove Dory, very very smart gentleman, Dove Dory, uh, and so even has to become a, to have become an ISO standard. Languages such as SDL, AADL, amongst others, lifecycle body language LML, amongst others. Languages associated with particular software tools, uh, which uh, in many cases are very sound and very easy to use. Uh, uh, in contrast with SysML, to be perfectly frank, uh, languages associated with tools like Core or, or uh, Genesis, uh, Insulate, Cradle, amongst others. And then there are, there are other languages for use in simulation. The uh, variety of languages usable and having direct application of model-based systems engineering is shown here. None of these diagrams is a SysML diagram. Functional design precedes physical design. Well, no it doesn't, or at least if it does, we either are going to go around in circles ending up back at requirements, 
or we have an exercise in fantasy. Or, or we have an unstated underlying physical uh, implementation, consumption, physical concept, uh, assumption, not conception, assumption. Now that point is illustrated here with a maybe a slightly amusing uh, drawing uh, of a design of a domestic intrusion detection system showing top right hand corner a system breakdown structure with system elements including a dog and then uh, in the, the bottom part of the diagram with the black functions the functional form of logical design with functions like detect smell provide, pre prepare food fix dog and bark functions intimately related to the physical concept and that is where the value from logical design in general functional design here as a specific example comes the two types of design are two sides of the one coin performed hand in glove and the and the sequence is physical concept formalization of the logic of that physical concept with iteration between logical and physical and then formalization back to physical as we make sure that the, all of the logic is uh, effectively implemented in the physical design. Myth number six. Work breakdown structure is a breakdown of work. Well, if it is, we've lost most of the value of work breakdown structure. Work breakdown structure is a breakdown of a project into product and service elements organized in a particular way against a set of principles and rules that give us a great number of advantages. Now, to use the example here, uh, a framework for costing, a framework for scheduling, a framework for definition by way of requirement specifications on the elements in the structure, a framework for risk analysis, a framework for measurement, a framework for identification or I should say assignment of responsibility, a framework for reporting and a framework for organisational design. If a work breakdown structure is just a breakdown of work, almost all of those benefits are lost and the others are compromised. Well, I hope you found this conversation interesting. If you would like to carry it further, I would encourage you to uh, engage with me on LinkedIn. Uh, and if uh, you or your organisation uh, would benefit from system engineering training or consulting, we would love to hear from you. Thank you for your interest.